Warning, the device being made in this video is extremely dangerous. It can lead to severe injury if not handled or built properly. Adult supervision is required. I am not a professional plumber and cannot guarantee your safety if you decide to build this project. Using an air-powered cannon to launch bait is illegal in many states. It is up to you to check local and state laws before building and using this device. Hey, what's going on everybody? So today, uh, before we start the video, like we have in every other video, we're going to start with a giveaway at 15K. So I'm going to be giving away a three and a half gallon starter kit. See it right here. Now, in order to enter, if you have Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok, this is what you have to do. And it's okay if you've already followed me there and you've already entered, just skip to the part that you haven't done yet. In order to enter the giveaway at 15K, what you need to do is subscribe to the channel. You need to like this video. You need to follow me on Instagram, TikTok, or Facebook, or all three, and then simply comment below and let me know what day of the week are you watching this video on. Simple as that. If you do not have Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok, then all you have to do is simply subscribe to the channel, like this video, comment below, and let me know what's your favorite color. That's it. That's all you have to do to enter. You're gonna get one more chance to enter the giveaway. You'll get that opportunity in one video that's coming out this weekend, and then we will finish up and announce the winner. Go ahead and make sure that you enter. Now, on to today's video. <laughs> this shower sucks. It does it. It's kind of dirty. Like, would you take a bath in there? I don't think about it. Either. I, you, I, I know you would. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? I am here in Home Depot with the one and only Brenton Zeckley, and he is currently in the shower eating a payday, drinking a. What were you drinking? A blue monster. A blue monster? Where's it at? <laughs> Dude, I'm. You're now in the gas chamber. <laughs> right, yeah, I'm not cutting that out. Hey guys, what's going on? So today we're actually gonna be doing a little bit of a DIY project. And I will tell you, it has nothing to do with fish keeping. However, it does have to do with fish. You probably don't know this, but I love to fish. I've always loved to fish, but I've never really focused any of my content on fishing. So let me know in the comments below, do you guys like to fish? Do you like fishing? Do you like to eat fish? What do you like about fishing? Go ahead and let me know in the comments below. But today, we're gonna be doing a DIY project because one of the things I love to do is I love to catfish. But what I do not like to do is I do not like to get my boat out. I don't like to go launch my boat and go out in the middle of the lake in the middle of the night when I like to do the catfishing. And it's just too much of a hassle. I like to walk literally right down my street out here and there is an entry to the lake literally less than an eighth of a mile away. I like to walk down to the bank. I like to cast out into the lake and I like to try to catfish. Problem is, can't catch really big catfish off the bank. So, I needed to figure out a way to get my bait into the middle of the lake without having to have a boat, and I also didn't wanna to have to go out and place jug lines. So today, we're gonna to be building something that's gonna help us get the bait into the lake further out without ever having to leave the bank. So, let's get into this build. I've already purchased the materials to do this build. All right guys, so here are the materials that we picked up, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and sort these out. Okay, well we have all of our materials lined up here. That was crazy, huh? It's like magic. All right, so what we have is, we have a two foot section of three inch Schedule 40 PVC. It must be solid core that can handle pressure. This particular pipe can handle 260 pounds per square inch of pressure. Then what we will need is one five foot section of one and a half inch PVC, one 90 degree three quarter inch T, one, two, three, four, three quarter inch T, regular T's, which look like this. Then you will need a three quarter inch to a half inch T. You'll need a few various pieces of three quarter inch pipe cut down to actually connect the connectors together. You'll need four pieces of 12 inch three quarter inch pipe, one piece of 15 inch three quarter inch pipe. You'll need a one and a half inch to three quarter inch T. You will need three 45 degree three quarter inch elbows. You will need a three inch to one and a half inch reducer. You will need two threaded 
connectors. I don't remember what these are actually called, but they're threaded connectors. You will need two one and a half inch elbows. You'll need a couple of pieces of one and a half inch pipe cut down to be able to connect these together. You'll need a three inch pressurized cap. Once again, make sure it's schedule 40 and that it can actually, it is for pressure. When you go into the store, it actually says not for pressure if you cannot put pressure underneath it. And then you will need a six inch hose clamp. And then you will need, which is the most expensive part of it. And you don't have to use this particular type. I just remember when I built this a long time ago, I'd watched a YouTube video and this is what they use and this works out really well, but this is a one and a quarter inch ball valve. And then of course you will need a pack of, or you can buy these independently, some PVC purple primer and PVC actual cement. Let's get this stuff together. Now I'm going to go ahead and like fit this together without gluing it just to make sure everything goes together. So we'll run a time lapse while we do that real quick. And then you will also need a, a 1 8 inch tank valve or sometimes it's called a Schrader valve. But basically what it is is it is a threaded end here and then this side is like a bicycle tire valve. All right, so the start of the build is gonna look very similar to this right here. So we have everything, and basically what this is, is this is gonna be your air canister. It'll feed air down into here. Your ball valve will actually control the flow of that air. And when you release that ball valve, obviously it's gonna release the air pressure in here, shooting the bait out of the barrel. Let's start getting this stuff glued together. So we're gonna start by taking some of the purple primer, and we're just going to put it on the inside of the pipe. And then we're gonna take the pipe itself, we're gonna put some primer on that as well. And then after that, we're gonna take the cement and we're gonna put the cement on the inside of the pipe like this. And we're gonna take the cement and we're gonna put it on the outside of this pipe like this. And then we're just gonna simply weld it together just like this. So now that one's done. We got one more to do. Now we're gonna take this elbow and we're gonna go ahead and attach it here. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing here. We're gonna take some of the purple primer, put it into the inside of the elbow. We're gonna take some of the purple primer over here. We're gonna place it on the outside of this pipe like this. And we're gonna take the blue cement and we're gonna put it around the outside of this pipe. Take the blue cement, put it on the inside of this pipe, and then we are simply gonna stick it together. Make sure it's got a nice form fit. You can use something to wipe that off if you'd like, which I'm just gonna use the brush. Doesn't matter how this looks because we're gonna end up painting this anyway. First piece is done. Now, we're gonna come back over here and we are gonna take another piece of one and a half inch pipe and we are now going to glue this into this side of the elbow. Same process again. So I'm just gonna run a time lapse as I do this, just simply because you've seen how to weld the pipe, now you know, and when you see the finished product and the supply list, it, it's pretty easy to put this thing together. Also, if you've seen somebody else build this exact one, please link their YouTube video in the comments because I watched this about six years ago and I'm doing this off completely off of memory and I cannot find that video anywhere. So if you happen to find it, please link it down below. All right, roll the time lapse. All right, so to attach the ball valve, you have to use some Teflon tape around this threaded area. So I'm wrapping Teflon tape completely around the threads. This will allow for the threads to make a seal, making it airtight under pressure. Once you have the Teflon tape on it, you just simply screw the ball valve onto the end. All right guys, so basically what we have at this point is, is one and a half inch piece of PVC that is connected down to a male threaded adapter that takes it from one and a half inch to one and a quarter inch. You then thread the tape, the Teflon tape around the thread, screw it into this ball valve. On the other side of this ball valve, you have the exact same setup. You have Teflon tape wrapped around the one and a quarter inch side of this one and a quarter inch to one and a half inch adapter. That is then connected to this 90 degree angle with a piece of small one and a half inch PVC pipe that comes around Around, connects to this 90 degree elbow with a piece of small one and a half inch PVC pipe. Another piece of one and a half inch PVC pipe connects this to a one and a half inch to three inch coupler that then connects to a three inch piece of 
PVC pipe. Then we have this little tiny piece of one and a half inch PVC pipe that's just kind of been notched out. So it sits between here nicely so this thing doesn't collapse. Then we're gonna take this hose clamp, wrap it around here and make sure it's all nice and tight. Now, we have a couple more things to do before we finish this up. The next thing is, is we need to cap this in. So this tube right here is actually going to be our air chamber that is going to be pressurized in order to shoot this cannon. And in order to pressurize it, we have to be able to cap it off. So what we have is we have a three inch PVC cap. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill a hole right in the middle of this and place a valve stem or a Schrader valve. So let's get that done now. Okay, this particular Schrader valve that I have has got a 3 8 inch end on it. So we're gonna use a 3 8 inch drill bit and we're literally gonna just drill a hole right in the middle of this PVC cap. And now we're gonna have to screw Schrader valve in there. And before we do that, once again, with anything that is pressurized, unless it has a compression fitting, which none of this stuff does, you must wrap it in Teflon tape. So we're gonna use the Teflon tape. We're gonna unwrap this Schrader valve with it. All right, so we have a good bit of the Teflon tape on the Schrader valve, and we are gonna screw it into the hole that we just drilled. Now that the valve is on here and it's tight, now we're gonna go ahead and glue it on to the end of the three inch pipe here. Now in order to do that, once again, we're gonna have to use our purple primer and our blue cement. All right guys, so now the bait launcher, the actual bait launcher itself is now together. Now what we need to do is we need to put some sort of a tripod on this thing in order for this thing to stand up on its own and that's what we're gonna build now. This particular piece really doesn't require any gluing or cementing. We're literally just forming a tripod onto this existing gun. So let's go ahead and get that done now. All right guys, well I'm sorry, but my camera corrupted the last file. So I'm gonna have to show you how to build this tripod. So I'm not actually cementing, I'm just using the purple primer, which will hold this well enough because there's no pressure. But basically you're gonna use the 15 inch piece of PVC on the bottom here. Then on the each end of it, you're gonna add a 45 degree connector. And then from that 45 degree, you're gonna use about a one inch piece of three quarter inch PVC and you're going to attach it to a T connector and that's on both sides. And then from these T connectors up towards this way, you're gonna have the two 12 inch pieces connecting to your 90 degree T. And then off of the 90 degree T facing away from you is going to be another 45 degree facing completely away from you. Once you've got that together, you're gonna take another one inch piece of three quarter inch PVC pipe and you're gonna fit that into there. And then we're gonna add this one and a half inch to three quarter inch T to the top of this facing directly towards you. So we're gonna get that glued together now. That takes care of this. We have a couple little more pieces to add to this, uh, such as another 12 inch piece, which is gonna come off of the bottom here like this. And then off of that, we will have a T, which basically just acts as a foot. And then on the other side, same thing here. So like I said, we have a little T at the end, 12 inch pipe up into here. This is kind of the way it looks. Has this up here, let me show you what this does. So the one and a half inch barrel, you're gonna slide this over top of it. All right guys, well my camera died so I didn't get to show you exactly what happened here, but this is that one and a half inch down to three quarter inch piece that was supposed to slide over the top of the barrel. Well, what I forgot is that this is actually meant as a joiner of one and a half inch PVC, so there is a small little lip right in the middle that runs around on the inside of this pipe. I ended up having to sand that completely out in order for it to slide freely over the top of this pipe, so you'll have to do that as well. I just used a little hand rasp, and what that is is this. It's like a little file. It's almost like a fingernail file. It's just made for wood, fine enough that it works on plastic as well. So, and it's also like a half moon shape. Worked perfectly grinding it down until I got to the point where it would slide over the pipe. I slid it down to where I wanted it to sit and then I used the six inch hose clamp to go ahead and clamp it down to where I want it. So this is what the gun looks like overall. All right, well this thing is completely done now. 
Let's go ahead and see what this thing will do if it'll fire or something. I have these little balls that we're gonna drop in here and just shoot it real quick and see what happens. All right, Max, what are we gonna do here, bud? We're gonna test fire this thing. All right, who's gonna be the trigger man? Me. You, all right. What we're gonna have to do, because of the trajectory of the barrel, this thing is gonna go right up into the ceiling. So I wanna be able to lift it up just a little bit here. Now what you need to do is you're gonna pull that handle like that. All right, Max, I'm gonna count you down, okay? Three. Oh, you wanna count down? Okay, you count it down. Two, one, shoot! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, there's a hole in the ceiling! <laughs> 